When I was a kid, there was a game we used to play that was very similar to the walking chair. The rules are simple. A group of children will form a circle and one person will walk around the circle holding an object. If the person drops the object behind your back and comes around while you're still sitting, you get kicked out. However, if you're able to pick up the object and catch up to the person who dropped the object, the person gets kicked out. Let's express this mathematically. In order to form a circle, let's draw two points in space. Choosing one as a center point, let's go around it to form a circle. Now let's give it objects to go around the circle. If they travel at a certain distance at the same pace, we see that the one closer covers more area faster than the ones farther. Since they are farther, it would take longer for them to go around the circle. In other words, the longer the distance, the longer it takes to go around the circle. But how do we measure the movement or distance of these objects around the circle? When we inscribed a triangle inside of a circle in our previous videos, we were able to solve the progression of the triangle and the changes in the angles. We saw three changes. The first is the changes made by the hypotenuse, the second is the changes made by the complementary angle and the third is the changes made by the right angle. The first one, we see that the angle made by the hypotenuse changes the length of the triangle. Notice that the hypotenuse does not change and is the radius of the circle. Since the length is opposite to the angle, the angle of the radius is the same as the change in the length and the hypotenuse. Therefore, the length is proportional to the hypotenuse. We can express this phenomenon mathematically by saying that the angle of the radius is the same as the change in the length and the hypotenuse. We don't know what angle so let's make it a general statement for the angle of the radius. Let's call it sinus to mean half of a chord. Now we have angle made by the ratio. Since the length is opposite to the angle, let's replace it with opposite. Now we have the expression sine of an angle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. We can treat the complementary angle the same as the sine angle. The only changes is that we subtract that angle from 90 to get what we want. And since we're dealing with the sine angle, we can say that the complementary angle is proportional to the base and the hypotenuse. So instead of writing the complementary angle, let's replace that with cosine. It is the sine of the complementary angle. And we said that sine is the opposite divided by hypotenuse. And observing from the hypotenuse angle, let's replace the, uh, let's replace the opposite with adjacent instead. So now we have the complementary angle is equal to the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. The last angle we can observe is the right angle. We see that this angle never increases or decreases. It always stays the same while the sine angle and the cosine angle changes. These changes also bring change to the length and the height of the triangle. With this, we can use this angle to observe the changes in the height and the length of the triangle. However, this will be illustrated better if we add a tangent line to the circle and see how it moves. Tangent line of a circle is defined as a straight line that touches a circle at one point and is perpendicular to the radius. When we start to move, we see that it moves along with the angles made by the hypotenuse and its complementary angle without changing. So we can express this mathematically by saying that the tangent of a circle, in this case the triangle, is proportional to the sine angle and the cosine angle. Since we've already derived the sine and the cosine, we can plot these equations into the ones we have so far and we get this equation. Using the division property, we can rearrange and solve for the tangent. Therefore, the tangent of a triangle is equal to the opposite divided by adjacent. And now, here are the three trigonometric ratios that we have. The sine of a triangle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. The cosine of a triangle is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And the tangent of a triangle is equal to opposite divided by adjacent.